Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. We're still speaking of, uh, um, you know, the Nigeria's 2021 budget and certain items in the budget that shouldn't be there in the first place and uh, the thoughts of corruption once again creeping in. Nigeria has uh, one of its worst years security-wise despite a 1.97 trillion naira budget for security. 24 billion naira was allocated for security votes for which no account is given. It's not just state governors and security agencies that receive such allocations. Budgets uh, research shows that 117 non-security agencies received allocation for security votes in the 2021 budget. Uh, we're still speaking this morning with uh, Mr. Shewon Igbinde and uh, Mr. Ken Ife. But we also will be joined by Bosinde Araipe, uh, who's a security expert, uh, to, of course, uh, share his thoughts on all of this. Um, I'm going to go to Kenny Fay now and uh, bring in the security um, aspect of it. Shocking to hear that non-security agencies are requesting security votes. Uh, and of course, it has gotten to as much as 24 billion naira uh, in uh, the 2021 budget. And all of this, of course, once again, non-accounted for. Um, quickly share your thoughts on that. Uh, non accounted for is, is a, a, a very serious matter. But you see, the, the, the security, national security is very complex. And it involves not just the military, it also involves the paramilitary, it involves civilians, it involves more players. And that's why the fight is a bit more difficult. I remember I sometimes I go and give lectures to uh, defense units uh, on sustainable development that I mentioned. Of, of, secure, of national security. And, and, and that is where you find a wider definition of national security in terms of economic security. There are so many things. It's very, very complex. And if you look at like vigilante, for example, is the vigilante is not being done by, by the army. It's being done by civilians. There are so many other schemes that are, are supportive of a, a, a more secure environment and participating in that process. So uh, to some extent, it may well be that they may look for contributions. Um, so I'm not really um, uh, losing my head on this particular, because the money you're talking about is really very small, a few billions, when we're talking about trillions in terms of the budgets that the military actually has. So we need to understand more who is doing what, because it's a, a much, much wider collaborative effort to deal with the security of do you agree? In much the same way, I failed to mention that if you if you are scrutinizing power, for example, uh, solar power being done in hundreds of places, also look at whether development partners are involved in this because I do find cases where development partners may replicate some support something being replicated, like uh, rural health uh, uh, solar power for uh, rural community health centers. I see some of them funding this across states. So we need to look behind. That's why I say that let's look beneath, behind to find out the source of that funding, even though they migrate into the pocket, that there may well be some connection to some development assistance. All right, Mr. Nigminde, do you agree with, with this perspective? I mean, I, I one, well, the first challenge I have with security vote is that it's a relic of the military era. And uh, that's I, something we took off from the military period, uh, where <clears throat> governors, um, the president, the VP, and I mean, everybody gets a security vote uh, line item in the budget, especially, and it's the way it's uh, been arrogantly peddled. Uh, it's that it's not, can be accounted for. Um, I mean, there's a story of a former governor of Abia State, Theodore who who is the case is in court. And he said he spent 38.3 billion naira in a very poor state that owes teachers, that owes pensioners, that owes doctors on security votes. Um, and 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 he's claiming in specifically that he can uh, he can do that because he's a governor. He paid that to several agencies and several organizations. Doesn't sound plausible to me. The whole idea is is, is for me it's. It's just about waste and pure, pure level of things not being accounted for. If we think, if ministries think they need an extra security um, support, and let that all that burden be put, let all that expenditure be put under the, the police or the NCDC 
or the military, if they think they need extra security. But for every single uh, agency in the budget, now sub having billions and millions of naira as their okay. own security vote, I mean, which possibly you know, the attention or the idea is that it can be accounted, it's crossly worrisome. All and right. I, I, don't, I don't think I like at all, yeah. All right. Well, now been joined by security expert, Mr. Wasinde uh, Araipe. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. How are you doing? Fine. Thank you. So we're talking about a report by budget. You know, they audited the 2021 budget and found lots of loopholes, uncovered massive corruption, duplication of budgets, and, and so much more. And talking about this now with a focus on security, we know that right now there is about 10.2 trillion naira, you know, six-year uh, security votes in the Nigerian budget for 2021. Despite the security votes to as much as, you know, 10 trillion naira, how do we explain the worsening insecurity in the country? Well, <clears throat> first of all, uh, when you say security votes, the question is, uh, nobody give account of security votes. Because it's assumed that uh, there are unthinkable things that may be done with that money that the public may not need explanation of for the interest of government. So security votes is now the easiest way of looting money from the government by office holders. Because that money, you don't necessarily have to give a detailed account of what it is used for. Because most security activities are covert activities. For example, the government cannot come and explain to the public how much they have to pay for intelligence or for informants and all of that or the police IG or the DSS, they don't have to give such accounts. Those are covert issues. So these places have given loopholes for budgets or security votes to become a loophole where office holders of different levels and appointed and elected begin to loop, uh, loot the national funds. That's on that angle. Now, coming to insecurity in Nigeria, never have we ever had problem in all geopolitical zone at the same time. In the past, we have had issues of militancy in the Niger Delta, where I am. Later, we had the issue of Boko Haram, but they were not happening simultaneously. This is the first time we are having a simultaneous attack from all quarters, all geopolitical zone in the nation, in the state Nigeria. What is the cause of this? The current occupants of the federal government of Nigeria, upon whom the title of the commander-in-chief of the armed forces falls under, has failed to protect the lives and property. And because they have failed to properly manage the security issue in the north, the people in the south, east and west, have seen the weakness of the government in handling security issues. Therefore, everybody think that they can now attack the Nigerian state because of the incapability of the government to protect the people. That is why we are witnessing insecurity. Mm. The lapses in the way they have coordinated the Boko Haram insurgents, how they have not been able to sort that issue, is what gave rise to other persons that, look, they can't handle Boko Haram. Why not we fire them from this area? Now, criminals, hoodlums, and all sorts are having a field day in the country. It is linked to the incapability of the federal government. All right. well, However, well, there is a solution. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Hello. So, Mr. Araipe, talking about the solution now, we know that security votes is top secret in Nigeria. And if we've talked about how it's not exactly justified, seeing that, you know, they can't come out to tell us just how much they're paying informants and all of that. And it gives room for corruption, budget padding and all of that. So what is the solution to this? Do we totally scrap security votes? If that's not possible, seeing that indeed we have security needs, you know, to fund, what should be the solution to this security votes and the mystery behind it in addition to the corruption challenge? Well, at this point, I don't think we should be talking about security votes. I think we should be talking about the solution to the current insecurity 
in our nation, Nigeria. I say this with all sense of responsibility as a citizen of the Federal Republic. The solution is simple. When you have failed, when we say, I have said it, that the federal government has failed in their responsibility of protecting lives and property. And I'm blaming the federal government because in Nigeria, the power to control arms rests solemnly on the president of the federal republic. That is why he's called the commander in chief of the armed forces. That is why I am blaming the federal government. Now, the only way to sort this issue out haven't seen that you cannot handle it. It is time to decentralize some of the federal security agencies and hand over full control to the state government. I'm talking state policing. Now, state policing does not mean you ban the Nigerian police or you hand them over to the governor. No, that is not what I mean. When I talk about state police, what I'm saying is that the Nigerian police force is there as a federal police. But tell me, what is the Nigerian security and civil defense doing with guns? They said that they are to fight bunkery, and all this illegal bunkery, and then a private guards approval. That is rubbish. I have read the act of the Nigerian security and civil defense as amended. And they have right to perform almost everything the Nigerian police do. All right. Um, they can also do it. I'm sorry, so if they can do it, what we need the federal government to do is this decentralize the leadership of the NSCDC, the civil defense, decentralize their leadership, hand them over to state government, let the governor appoint the state commandant of NSCDC. All right, let Mr. Rekwe, the right um, to sack and be fire. because of time... Let him be the commander-in-chief of the, of the NSCDC. All right, Mr. Rekwe, let because of time, I, I, I would like us to, you let know, um, focus our let conversations this morning on the, on the budget and the financial aspects of it. Um, so I'm going to go back, uh, before we wrap up, I'm going to go back to Shewu on Igbin Day. Uh, I, I want you um, to share your thoughts on what the government's response should be. It's not the first time budget is putting out an analysis like this. Um, it's also not the first time that it has pro very likely been ignored. So what would you expect from the budget office of the Nigerian government uh, from this? And of course, the accountant general, auditor general, all of them. What is your, um, your expectations uh, from all of this? Hello? Um, our approach is to take it forward, um, which is to engage with three main arms, the budget office, um, the engage with the budget um, officers in the respective ministries, and also engage with the National Assembly. I want to do this within the next two months um, so that we can um, influence the 2022 budget cycle mm. and be able to uh, highlight some of the issues that we see. Uh, at the end of the day, it all goes back to political will to do the right thing. Uh, if we see our budget process as crucial to um, resource optimization, then we will do the right thing. All right. Um, so um, we are going to start the engagement on this. Okay. So, Mr. Ken Ife, um, bringing you in lastly, you are an economist. So what should the Nigerian budget look like for it to you know, truly uh, be a budget that lifts up the economic status of Nigeria? Well, the, I think that two things in your question. One is uh, really about the budget itself and how important it is and what it could do. But the important thing really is what the budget uh, people have doing. Because we cry that we don't have enough money to do most of the things we wanted. Our revenue is only one third of its potential. Because uh, the government revenue is about 6%. The tax is 6% of our GDP. Africa average is about 18%. So we know we have a mileage to go three-fold increase. But how about the one we are getting? How is it being spent? That's where the budget work is so critical. But I have to say to this, uh, in, in summing up, the, the, there are shared constituencies around the budget. The federal authorities have their job, then the assembly have their jobs. There has always been contention between them on, the, on where the power stops and where the other person's power begins. And I keep asking them to go to Supreme Court to sort this out. But whatever happens, these two people are very, very important. So in your advocacy scheme, you must involve the National Assembly and as well as the federal authorities. And I've seen, I've seen National uh, Assembly screaming that, that they have their initial, the right to participatory budget. 
and which means that they must be taken into account in the budgeting process and not left out and then eventually take them to come and become a rubber stamp. So that goes to the, to the base of this. So, and that's saying that, look, you claim that you have done a constituency project. We don't see anything on the ground. My, my people are complaining to me. So you really have to engage both, both parties and do their capacity to understand what they need to do and then bring the public scrutiny, which is what you are doing by having this on television. So just a little bit more work to be done, but keep on with the technology. Technology is our savior in this country. Okay. This is what will take us to the next level. Not, not um, uh, you know, horse trading or any of that. It is technology. All right. How effectively we use it and how we now bring the advocacy framework to ensure that it is used appropriately to build capacity of all the stakeholders. All right. Um, a lot of advocacy, um, a lot of these conversations, uh, a lot of the unraveling, but most importantly, uh, the political will to actually look into these things and make the necessary changes. We'll say thank you to uh, Mr. Ken Ife. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Shewo Nigbinde, thank you thank also you. for your time yes, this morning. Thank you. And uh, Bosinde Araigbe, thanks uh, for your time. Good morning to you once again. Thank you. All right. So um, that basically sums that up. You know, Budget is now asking for the government to actually audit the budget, ensure transparency. It's just for us to wait and see. Once again, political will. Just because there exactly. There's an Auditor General's office, there's a Budget office, there's an Accountant General, there's a National Assembly. Um, these things shouldn't just, you know, be passed through and, and signed off and and uh, giving a go ahead without some of these things being spotted. How is it so easy for budget um, as, an, uh, as an, uh, an organization, as a company to spot these things, but we have um, institutions that have been set up for these purposes and they've ignored it. And like I said, it's not the first time budget is pointing these things out. Um, they have in, or, in or organizations budgets. like SERAP, for, for instance. Exactly, they have in, in previous uh, budgets, uh, but they've mostly been ignored. And Ken, if you also mentioned, sometimes they are taken out and then brought back in. And so it's, it's a system that has continued to evolve and continue to, not, well, not even evolve, it's continued to be like this for a very, very long time. Um, mostly, I believe, because it benefits, you know, some people. And so, you know, yes, nothing, Mr. Nothing Kenneth much said it. So, if the budget seems like an extension of personal interest, what, what really is the hope of the common man? Okay. Yes, yeah, so that's the conversation on the budget. We'll take a break here and return to stay with us.